What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lose Your Ass Podcast. We are going into our final segment of the day. We're going to be talking a little bit of baseball. Finally, we have something to talk about in baseball. I'm so excited. Baseball is my true, true sport. Um, got some uh, a few stories, but some big stories. Uh, the MLB commissioner, Rob Manfred, has spoken this week about the return of baseball coming pretty soon. It's looking like it's going to be the end of June, no later than July 4th. Uh, there's still a lot of speculation about how they're going to conduct the season. If they're going to do 100 games or 80 games, it looks like they're going to do a three-division proposal, which would be really cool because it'll be the first time the Mets and the Yankees will be in the same division. You'll have the Reds. Oh, is that how they're is that how they're going to do it? They're going to do it like yeah. East. Oh, east, that's Central sick. and West. Yeah, they'll have the now Mets. That ri- the now that rivalry is getting really good. Yeah, it'll be so cool. I'm, I'm so yeah. interested. To- how they're going to do this. It's going to be really cool. Um, now, James, did they bring up anything with the minor league, or is it just they're just talking major league right now? Some cuts, some cuts in the minor leagues, less teams uh, that, can, that can affect a lot of the teams that have a deep minor league system. Um, it's looking like, as of right now, there's some proposals to cut some minor league systems. Uh, we'll see so, how that so goes. Like, so, like, would the si- these single A guys are, they're probably the ones that are going uh, like, Not so much, I wouldn't say not so much single A. Um, I would say more in the lines of, like, uh, low ball, which is a little bit prior to single A. Okay. Uh, the, you know, the, all the Florida leagues are probably going to be dismantled, unfortunately. We'll see how it goes. The MLBPA might fight for that. We're not. We're unsure, but the uh, the players' association unfortunately doesn't care about the minor leagues. You know, same as in yeah. any other sport, except for uh, yeah. Um, we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting leading up to this whole situation, and hopefully, this is only a year long thing. Just get us through this season, and we'll see where we go from there. But it's. It's looking. It's very touch and go right now. But gotcha. The good news is there will be baseball. Uh, how it happens, we don't know yet. But it's looking like no later than July fourth, we will have a baseball season coming. Thank God. Where do you see? Like, I know there was talks about potentially doing. I know for NBA it was like Disneyland for. MLB, it was like Arizona or something like that. Where, where do you think it's going to end up? I mean, they can't uh, obviously like obviously you can't pack a baseball stadium this year. No, 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 you cannot. Certified people only. Get the media in there. Get the people you need to be in there. The broadcasters, the players. That's about it. Um, let's be as safe as possible. Let's make sure there's no setbacks on the season more than we've right. already had. Right. Um, I I would prefer it to be in Arizona. You have some right. dome stadiums there, some climate controlled environments. Get the players in there because you have players that are going to be used to the cold, used to the, the heat. Get them in climate controlled, and I don't know how the whole virus things works, but I feel like a climate control scenario might actually help out a little bit. Gotcha. Um. Uh, so, like, the playoff format, if it's only, like, through, what's it, they said three divisions? Yes, they're going to expand the playoffs. Okay. They're going to expand. It's kind of going to be, like, a hockey thing? You know what I mean? Yes, I believe it's going to be ten teams. I've heard some rumors of that. Ten-team playoff rather than an eight-team playoff. Okay. So, you'll be getting in the, um, I assume it will be three. Probably two, four, six, and then maybe four wild cards. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, they, they haven't released any details on it because they don't even know if they're going to start a season yet. But from the most part, that's I've heard so many different uh, options on what the MLB is going to do here. Gotcha. Uh, if there's ever a 
a league that's more prepared to do this, it would be the MLB because they've gone through so many different changes since 1869, I believe. They've had so many. They used to play 152 games, 150 games. So they're used to adapting along the way. And there wasn't always as many playoff teams. There was never a wild card. Right. So they know how to adapt to this better than most. I think for me, yeah, for for me the question is like, I, I'm a listen. I go to probably one or two baseball games a year. I'm a Yankee mm-hmm. fan. I watch the Yankees. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I watch them and they're in the playoffs. But for me, you know, baseball. I know my girlfriend loves baseball. Baseball isn't like my number one sport. Do you think if they cut the season down, even a little bit less than eighty games, if they cut it down? 50 or 40 do you think that's going to bring more fan inter like more fan interest it could bring a new basis of fans i think it might hurt the original fan base because where that 162 games this is a marathon not a sprint right So I think it could bring new fans into it, but I think those new fans would go away as soon as the old system goes back into place. Uh, No, I get get what you're saying there. Um, But it's going to be interesting to see what they have to do because all the major sports teams are kind of going to have to go through that same... Yes. Major sports, sorry, leagues are going to have to go through that same, uh, you know, question. Uh, So, but... So that's great news with the MLB... Getting, I know you are a big MLB guy. Yes. Uh, but do you think also this new way of going about it and the new uh, form that they might be using? Do you think this is going to help the Astros um, kind of lay low now because <laughs> of all that's going on? Do do. Yeah. yeah. No. Um. Un- actually, fortunately. For baseball, we're a very unforgiving. Giving. Uh, this is not, a, and listen, under best circumstances for the Astros, coronavirus hit. Under best circumstances for the Astros, there's going to be a shorter season. Right. However, it's not going to work in their favor. People are not going to forget the way you cheated baseball the way you cheated the Yankees, the way you cheated the Dodgers, the way players got cheated. Cody Bellinger got cheated right. out of an MVP. Right. People are not going to forget that. Oh, and if see. people start to forget that, people will be will be reminded quickly because people are going to keep talking about it. Astros fans see. will move on. Every well, other course. team will not. See, for you to be defending the Dodgers and the and the the Yankees, it's got to be uh, it's got to be rough. It is. It is. <laughs> they took my '88 Mets out with the Dodgers, and the Yankees took my 2000 Mets out. So yes, right. it's very it's very hard for me to de- to defend those teams, but, but it's very easy for me to defend them, knowing that they beat my team, right, the right way. You still you still feel that about two thousand Yankees? Yes. Uh, don't don't cheat baseball. Right. Baseball. Uh, I've always said this. I am a Mets fan second. I am a baseball fan first. Right. So, so do not cheat for, baseball. For you, uh, who's this? You know, big baseball fan. And uh, sorry that I'm asking you all these questions, but. As someone who doesn't follow it as much, like I, I know what's going on. I can tell you who's on top and what, what not. And I can tell you about the Yankees, but I don't follow it quite as in detail as you. Um, is the Astros controversy scandal worse than the steroid scandal? Yes. yes. Okay. You think because. that? Okay. I, I I always look at life this way. Who's the leader in the room? Right? So with the Astros, there was 25 men on that roster who could have said, no. Right. 
we're not doing this. There was a coaching staff who could have said, no, we're not doing this. A video yeah. team who could have said, no, we're not doing no, this. Not doing this. Uh, upper management team who could have said, no, we're not doing this. And none of them did that. Collectively, as a unit, front mm-hmm. office, coaching staff, players, video team, editing team, all said, yes, we're going to cheat. Yeah. The steroid no, era right. was one player on this team saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. Not yeah. telling anybody about it. I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be better than everybody else. Right. That was selfishness. What the Astros did was a collective unit of people saying... They ruined the integrity of the game. Right. We're going to cheat the fans. We're going to cheat my team. We're going to cheat our fan base. We're going to cheat baseball of everything. We're just going to cheat our way to a victory. And we're going to bang on garbage cans while we do so. Right. So from the Astros, I got to start talking. As, As you know, I'm a big Yankee fan. Uh, growing up, Derek Jeter was my favorite player. Um, the Hall of Fame this year is now getting pushed back to 2021. How do you think this is going to... How do you think the Hall of Fame is going to go down uh, next year? What are your feelings about the Hall of Fame being canceled? Or not canceled, but postponed? Say this, it's, re- it's really, really disappointing. Right. But it's just like everything else right now. Everything that's being pushed back or being canceled, postponed, whatever it is. It's just disappointing. Um, these guys deserve it. Derek Jeter and Larry Worker, Larry Walker are two of the most deserving players to get into the Hall of Fame. I would love to see them right. in, in mid to late July getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Cooperstown, New York would flourish. Right. Because we would have so many New Yorkers there. I remember uh, a few years back when Mike Piazza and Ken Griffey Jr. got inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was incredible. Right. It was incredible, and, that, and that's what, you know... And, and, American... and also, like, no, first off, Ken Griffey Jr. and Mike Piazza are incredible players and mm-hmm. absolute stars. But I think when you talk about superstar magnitude, Derek Jeter is on his whole whole other level than those two guys. Even even Ken. Even I, Ken. I would say he's more on a superstar level than Piazza. I wouldn't Ken, say Ken is Griffey. I think Griffey and Jeter are all on the same wavelength. Yeah, but when you're talking about a, a thing that's happening in New York, Derek Jeter was is, has essentially been part oh, of most yeah. New Yorkers. You know what I mean? Mm. But uh, I get what you're saying. With Ken Griffey Jr. Yes. changed the game, and however he had um, his own shoes. From a New York standpoint, I, I'll, I'll say this: when 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 Piazza and Griffey got inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, it was not officially. Referred to as the 9-11 Hall of Fame. Oh, gotcha. But, uh, most people don't know this uh, unless you watch the Hall of Fame documentary about it. And um, if you know a lot of things about baseball, uh, Mike Piazza's return. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike Piazza's September 21st return to baseball when he hit that, that go-ahead home run in the eighth inning against the Braves was a moving forward point. For New York yeah, and the United States after 9-11. But Ken Griffey also had a major role in 9-11. And that was in the fact that um, one of the family members, I don't remember the name, unfortunately. One of the family members who passed away was a huge uh, fan of the Reds at the time. Huge fan of Ken Griffey Jr. And uh, I've been thinking it was about a month or two after 9-11, Ken Griffey Jr. reached out to that family and invited them down to Cincinnati to come watch the game. And Ken Griffey Jr. is still in contact with that family. He still he calls them up and talks to them when they're doing homework to help them with their homework. And it's, oh, wow. it's a very emotional and very touching story. So I think that that, whole, that um, induction itself, being held in New York, and uh, being held in New York, having those two guys being inducted in the same year was a huge thing for New York. Perhaps more than Derek Jeter, because the only thing that New Yorkers are going to be happier about than Derek Jeter is recovering from 9-11. So it's major. That was a major Hall of Fame induction, and this is probably going to be the second largest Hall of Fame induction in New York history. 
with Derek Jeter. Yeah. No, I think you're right there. Because Derek Jeter had a major role in 9-11 as well. Right. Right. Sorry, I apologize. I am getting a little emotional here. No, I understand. To- people, listen, I, I, totally I, get it. Totally I, get it. My cousin died in 9-11, so whenever I discuss it, it comes it's, up. Totally I, was understand. At, I was at the Piazza game, and that was we had tickets for the 13th, I think it was, and it got postponed until the 21st. I was at the first game back. I was six years old. I had no idea what the hell was going on. Right. Uh, yeah. No. I. I. Listen. I. I get it. It's. 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 Tough to think about now, too. Um. Yeah. I'll get back into that. Actually, I'm gonna get into it right now. Um. My next thing I would like to discuss about uh what's going on in baseball right now. Um. Senator Mitch McConnell said this week to Commissioner Rob Manfred. Uh, trying to get him to get going on bringing baseball back. Mitch McConnell said to Rob Manfred, America needs baseball back. And I would just like to touch on this a little bit. Any issue America has gone through, baseball has always been there. It's always brought us back. And I'll bring you back to the, the Mike Piazza 9-11 home run. Uh, after the home run, it brought us a sense of normalcy. It was like we were a country again. And it brought us back to life. And so, yes, Mitch McConnell, you are 100% correct. America needs baseball back. We need baseball back. I need baseball back. It's going to be a distraction from every unfortunate thing that is going on right now. All the lives lost, all the lives affected. Um, We need baseball back, but we need baseball back under circumstance of everybody doing this safe, everybody doing this with full health. So yes, we need baseball back and I don't know how we're going to get there, but we have to do this under extreme caution. Amen. America, baseball is America's pastime. Yeah. 150 years strong. Of baseball, right. this is you know, it, it's that's the American dream, right? White picket fence, throwing a baseball around with your kid in the front lawn, right. it, watching the games. I, I mean, everybody can say baseball is boring, but I, I see a lot of pictures on Instagram, and I'm not a social media guy, but I always see like pictures of little league teams with that hashtag that says, "This isn't boring, this is beautiful." Yeah. We need that back. We need something to really inspire us again. And I keep talking about this with, with my friends and with um, other podcast people. We keep saying, what is going to be that moment in a baseball game? Because it's going to happen in a baseball game. Baseball will be the first sport back. You, When's that? You moment? think baseball. What's that? You think, you think baseball is coming back before basketball? Yes. Okay. Yes. I know that they're trying to open facilities by May 8th and all this other stuff, but I do believe baseball will play regular season games before that. Baseball is also a pretty... Social distancing is a little bit more possible in, in a baseball exactly. game exactly. than in a, in a basketball game. No, you're right there. Mm-hmm. So I keep talking about what's going to be that moment. Right. Because after 9-11, Sammy Sosa running through the outfield with a little American flag was one of those moments. Yeah. Mike Johnson's home run was one of those moments. Derek Jeter's home run was one of those moments. President Bush throwing out the first pitch of the Yankee game in the World Series against the Diamondbacks was one of those moments. What's going to be that first moment? Who's going to hit the big home run? Who's going to throw the complete game shutout? What's going to be that moment? And I think we're all... Aaron Judge is going to be that moment. Aaron Judge will not be that moment. <laughs> I know, I know. I want him to be so bad. <laughs> but uh, no, no. I think I think you said it correct. It's uh, it's definitely you know needed. It is. It is. Sports and, uh, are needed. But, but I'm excited. I I can't wait to talk more baseball. I mean, we 
basically have covered everything in baseball. Like we talked about our over unders a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, for the Which season. we're gonna redo. And we're gonna, we're gonna have to that because it's gonna be. Yeah, we're we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna redo some of that stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. We're gonna some more that's because the divisions are gonna change. We have tougher divisions now. Right. Um, stuff like that. It's gonna be really exciting. I'm I'm so excited. I want to see how this plays out. I really do. Um, yeah. Now we also have um, a little bit of disheartening news. But as usual, uh, baseball is one of those sports where it really, they really, really, really come together in, in certain times. Um, yeah, it was, it, I mean, it was the first. I, I just watched something. First game after Osama bin Laden was uh, Daniel Murphy was at bat or killed against the Phillies, and they started chanting USA in the crowd. And yeah. Daniel Murphy, I remember this. They part of the documentary. Daniel Murphy was so like, he was, I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> because he had no idea what was happening. Yeah, they didn't have any idea. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. After every major kind of thing in in the United States, it's been a baseball game after. Yeah. Uh, baseball is a big family. And uh, when somebody hurts yeah. in baseball, we all hurt. Uh, same as any other sport. Um, right. I think baseball and the NBA are the two sports that really, they're so family-oriented. And not to discredit any other league or affiliation or anything like that. Um, but it's just, it's a family thing. And when one person hurts, we all hurt. Uh, so I just want to end the show with this. Uh, Trey Mancini of the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, he's, he's now a fielder. Uh, good player, you know, it... On the Orioles, you kind of get overshadowed when you are a good player anyway because of the, their recent demise. And uh, Trey Mancini, unfortunately, uh, within about a week or two ago, was uh, diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. At the age of 26, um... We're going to see how this plays out. He is going to get operative surgeries and all these other things. But uh, to all the baseball fans out there, I, I do propose this. The Orioles have posted a hashtag that we would like to see the baseball community post about. It's uh, it's hashtag fight, but uh, it's for his number. It's hashtag F16 for 16 GHT. I'm sorry. Hashtag F16HT. Uh, hashtag fight for Trey Mancini. Uh, stage 3 colon cancer. I can't even imagine what he's going through right now at the age of 26. Very young, especially for colon cancer. Um, it's it's horrible. They like said he's a good player. and All I've ever seen from this kid is like youth and enthusiasm. <laughs> Right, right. Right, he's a fast, he's a fast guy. Um, right. So it's uh, disheartening, and like you know, he he tweeted out a few days ago. He said, uh, you know, thank you for telling for telling my story and all that stuff. He said thank you to the Orioles because if it wasn't for the Orioles putting the players through the, the preseason physicals and all this other stuff, he would never have known. Have yeah. Stage three, you know, if it could have been advanced, you know, this could mean his life. Right. So, um. A uh, a huge, huge from us over here at the Lose Your Ass podcast to yes. train uh, a huge get get better man and get back to baseball. We uh, I believe he tweeted out. Uh, I think it was about a week ago or so. He said, um, "If there is baseball." In the 2020 to 20, you know, in the 2020, 21, 21 season, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be without me. And it's just, it's sad to hear somebody at that age not being able to do what they love because of their illness. And hopefully he gets better. And uh, best of luck to him. And we hope to see you on the field as soon as possible, Trey. Right? 